Welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, where today will be part one of our discussion of chapter three of Whither Are We Traveling? Asleep at the West Gate. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren all, welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, a casual conversation around Freemasonry. First, it's important to note that our thoughts and opinions are our own and do not reflect those of our Grand Lodge or respective craft or concordant bodies. Please connect with us and ask questions via our website at theworkingtoolspodcast.com. Today on the Working Tools Podcast, we have our usual host of, of uh, Masons to discuss things. <laughs> we have Worshipful Brother Stephen Chung from Prince Charles Lodge Number 153 in British Columbia. Worshipful Brother Jared, Jared Dunham of <laughs> Penticton Number 147, also in British Columbia. And uh, we have very Worshipful Brother David Colbeth from uh, King Solomon Lodge Number 60 in Washington. And I'm Matt Apple, and I'm from Mill Creek 243, also here in Washington. And today we're continuing our discussion of the the, I never quite know what to call it, pamphlet, book, short book, very big article, Whither Are We Traveling by Dwight L. Smith, who's a past grandmaster of Indiana. It was written uh, some time ago, but it seems to be an influential work in masonry uh, of late. So we're, we're analyzing it chapter by chapter. And today we're starting our discussion of chapter three, which is titled Asleep at the West Gate. So I guess my first broad question is, what's everyone's impression of this one? I my big I get my big question is 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 this relevant anymore? You know, there are, the, this is actually the the chapter so far that we read that I made the least comments on on my piece of paper that when I was writing down comments and like my first one is like you know get the new temple paid for you know or the old one and then <laughs> you know I, I had a bunch of comments like that that were like yeah right. you know well no but like because it's, uh, my big big question because up up here in the north. We have our six steps to initiation program that's been in place for 15 years now? Well, since 2012. So 10 years. Okay. So, but you know, we've had a decade of lodges and the lodges that run it seem to be doing well. And the lodges that, you know, are picking it up. Like I, I'm what, what that was the first, the thought that went through my mind when I was reading this chapter was, uh it like for guarding the west gate is well first off is it a problem and then maybe have we guarded the west gate a little too well because i'm not seeing us deny one in five petitions for sure and i think i think they're getting weeded out like you said in the six test process way ahead of time they're weeding themselves out right yeah essentially yeah i mean there have been in in my 10 uh, years or so of running the program there have been inside of a handful that never made it through to um the rest of the program right um it, we we weeded them out in the process like sorry this doesn't sound like it's a good fit for you um sorry i don't think we're a good fit not thinking anything in particular there but that we might not be able to give you what you're looking for and you know that's happened a few times now right so <clears throat> our, our investigation processes in my opinion become so you know just by default right you almost you have to do it because the code says you have to have an investigation but if if at this point in with six steps if you've gotten that far and you don't know the answers to those questions that he's, you're asking him you probably didn't do your six steps. Now, I do think that there's a absolute necessity for an investigation. It it forces the questions, if nothing else, and then it should be, in my opinion, conducted in their their own environment, whether their house or whatever, with potentially with their family, to allow them to ask questions about what's happening. If again, hopefully they already know, and hopefully you've already met them. But you know, it's kind of like it's supposed to be in their comfort. Like when you when you go to negotiate something, you generally want it to be on your terms. And then the person's kind of offset. So hopefully, when they come, when they're in your house, when they're we're in their house, then it's a little hopefully more comfortable for that. Although I remember my investigation, we had no idea what to do, and so we were like, you know, kittens in a rocking chair factory, not knowing what to do. Yeah, actually, you know, even the fact that I've been through Demolay and been in, been around Masons for years, 
when it came time for the visitation at my home, we had no idea really. My wife was playing hostess with milk and cookies and coffee and tea and uh, all that stuff, right? You know, which really was nice, but it was not the purpose. And so, um, that was exactly know. what my wife said. Well, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed? To? I said, well, I guess you know, like leave it to Beaver. We could have some cookies and some coffee brewing just in case. And they didn't need any of that, or we didn't want any of it. They didn't touch it. But I, I thought, yeah, we're going to host. We have really hosted people like that before. We've had yeah. parties and stuff, but not really a host like that. So it was, we didn't yeah. have to do. That. So and that, actually, these guys did. ate all of it, and, and they, they did. Know. Oh yeah, it was it ended up being about two hour investigation. Well, did you you knew them though, probably? Uh, yes, yeah, yes. Okay, I I knew them because I was hanging around the Job's daughters in Demolay for yeah. the previous you know eight years here, right? So, so that's um, probably something. You know, I don't think that we talk with them even in our six steps about the investigation and what's going to happen, and so that probably is a good idea to add that to that process so they know. Again, in our lodge, assuming we're going to do that go to their house and talk with them and everything, that probably would be good. Yep. I tell them that on the first meeting. I, I lay out the whole program as to what to expect from start to finish. And I said, and if you get past the memory test and submit a uh, uh, petition for membership, then you're going to have three old wise farts come to your place and they're going to be um, there to answer the questions of your family members and, you know, um, any, any more questions that you may have, but I, I, I give them the whole process from start to finish. Right? But we do, uh, we do go, give a lot of emphasis on the memory test because we do ancient work and our prove ups are long in comparison to that funny Canadian work. Right. So, they have to memorize six pages of of things to uh, get through, you know, their first degree and so on. So we we give them a, a two or three paragraph memory test um, prior to receiving their application. Because so if they, they don't pass, do, they don't pass that. They don't get in. No, nope. there's no there's no point if they can't do the memory uh, complete the memory test, then they can't commit their obligation to memory. So they can't prove up. They can't proceed through the, the process, right? So, so what happened? How did? So now I'm going to go back to a few shows <clears throat> ago. You mentioned there was a guy that was a great leader, but he couldn't. But I think that uh, <clears throat> um, you know, we I think we've been doing a good job using the six step program to um, guard the Westgate. So but, I made a comment later. You know, would. You know, and it just that would that would stick in my craw a bit. Yes, mine too. Yeah, that we're all gardeners. Well, I'd like to think so. You know, I, I. So, just as a massive tangent, there is actually a Masonic sort of group uh, that are the the gar the what is it the something order of the gardeners. <clears throat> they wear like huge aprons that go down like past their knees. What? Yeah, in Washington. <laughs> well no i think i think i think they're only in australia now they were you know i think that like australia is the only one that actually still has a grand lodge of that when i was reading about it but you're muted matt yeah they i read about that too there's a the, i guess at one point they were as big as the masons or close and they're yeah. far off the topic of asleep at the west gate but <clears throat> yeah i do want to say one quick thing on the subject of affinity lodge two quick things on the subject of affinity lodges one of which is i think we have a couple here in washington right we've got the one for that sort of a filipino uh group of Mason, gaelic descent scottish and irish affinity oh, there, but yeah i would say that quiet he the george mason was on his list of, of colleges that he that well as you can see we experienced some technical difficulties. Thanks for your patience while we figure it out. All right, so we're back back recording again. David can splice this together if he wants. So, All right, so yeah. I know it's a little bit off topic, but it's still on topic if you think about, you know, it, it's the West Gate. And, you know, I know we're talking about affinity lodges, but that's that's a tool to draw people to the West Gate. Right, <clears throat> I think we still need to um, guard the Westgate and, and vet those coming through. Um, 
but <clears throat> I imagine there'd be a lot less issues if it was coming to an affinity lodge. Because mo yeah. most people of like mine, they already know each other fairly well and whatnot, right? You know? So. Yeah, they at least have, have something in common, one would think. But yeah, they, I don't. All right, so not to call out my own lodge or anything, but we don't do the six-step program, I would argue, at all. But if we do it at all, we don't do it well. And so I, I have been trying to hold off. <clears throat> we actually have a hand, handful of people who are, are candidates who are interested. They're not candidates. They're, they haven't petitioned yet. They're interested pers persons from this, the local area. Seekers. And I'm trying to... to drag it out a little bit, you know, despite the the old guys coming me up, up to me before the meeting going, I'm going to give this guy a petition kind of thing. So it's a, but it's a battle to try to change people's mindset about that sort of thing. It is, it is, but it, it's important to do, right? And uh, yeah, you, you, you'll get some resistance from some, right? Um, and, you know, you, even today, as long as our lodge has been running that, we still got guys who think that they can get their buddy to bypass the six step program. It's like, I don't know where you got that idea. I'm the guy running the program. Nobody, <laughs> nobody comes uh, into this lodge without going past the rec membership recruitment and retention committee. Right. And uh, sorry, we put everybody through the six step process, you know, because we had one, one guy, who was uh, uh, a businessman in, in the community. He uh, went a lot of places and he brought a lot of tradespeople to the lodge and um, great guy. He says, yeah, I know these, I know, I know I've known him for years. Right. But he's never had him at his house and sat down and had and broken bread with him. He's never, you know, gotten together with him outside that, that work environment, you know, so how well did he really know him? And, you know, they were seemingly nice enough brothers. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. But they're not regular attenders either. We don't see a lot of them. And a lot of them say that it's because of their, um, their uh, work. They're too busy, right? And, well... The guy who brought me in said, you know, work and family come before lodge. Well, this is true, but, you know, <laughs> you still need to participate somewhat in order to get what, you know, lodge has to offer, right? So so we, we have posited that uh, the six-step program is a potential solution to this. The problems ari uh, arised, uh, brought forth Arising. by this chapter. What's that? I'm sorry. Arising. Arising. The things that he talks about in this chapter. <laughs> um, so when I've said my lodge doesn't do it, and if we do it, we don't do it well. How would you guys suggest starting it up in earnest? In your lodge? In, in Well, in a lodge. I mean, in my lodge, yes. But, but in a well, lodge in general, I some mean, lodge comes to you and says, yeah. you do the six step thing and we don't. How do I start it? Well, I guess the first thing to do is download the six step pamphlet to begin with and familiarize yourself with it. Yeah. Uh, it's the, there's a whole manual there. Everything has all the documents that you would give a seeker tells you all the stages to go through, right? Just download the program. Uh, I think it's available on our grand lodge website. Yeah. And if not, I can email it to you. Hear that, folks? Contact Stephen Chum. <laughs> yeah. Right? At the working Tools Podcast at gmail.com. Well, and I guess the other question that arises from this chapter is, are you qualifying your candidates? Like, are we, are, are, do, you, do you have, you know, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you're not high enough in our community, or, you know, you don't do enough for the community. You know, we really don't want you as part of our, like, because it's what he says in this chapter is that not only do you need to part of guarding the West gate is, you know, making sure that they're quality candidates. You know, yeah, how but do you define a quality later, candidate? But later on in the, in the, uh, 
uh, paper also talks about guarding the East Gate. You know, you can have good quality membership in uh, coming through the West Gate, but not all of them are going to be leaders, right? And not all of them are going to want to go through the chairs and become a uh, past master. So, you know, and our you should be identifying that as they come in through the six step program. And I always contend that everyone should want to go through the chairs. Well, it would be cool if everybody wanted to go through the chairs, but there are people who just are not wanting to take on leadership roles. They don't have the time to, to commit to it and, and do a, and give it a, a proper job, uh, give it their, their all. So um, I don't think that they should be forced to go through the chairs. No, but there's, uh, what is it? Uh, we all have, uh, uh, I, the I, the word is escaping right now, but just because you can't do something now doesn't mean you might not be able to do it later. True, and if they ever have the desire, we're always willing. To well, no, but they should have the desire and just have the realization they can't do it now. Is what I'm saying is that you know, there's a difference between someone saying I never want to do this, and a, someone saying. Right now is not a good time for me, but I want to do it when it when I have the time to do it. And well, and I'm just is that part of guarding the West Gate? No, that's part of guarding the East Gate. But no, because but do you not want to get members in that? Because an organization can't survive if it doesn't have people to run it. This is true. What do you think past masters are for, though? They're not the ones that should be running things. <laughs> They're the ones that should be sitting back and it, letting other people run things. <laughs> oh, the bear. Oh, the bear. Um, <clears throat> I understand what you're saying. And it would, it would be in an ideal world that everybody would want to be uh, a worshipful master. But I know there's several guys in lodges all over the place that they don't want that responsibility. They don't want all that extra work, but Hey, they, they want to contribute to the lodge. They want to help out. They do it in different ways. Right. So, um, I'm kind of okay with it. If, if we bring in members that, cause you know, I've learned, it takes all kinds to make the world go round. You need an accountant, you need a plumber, you need a lawyer, right? You know, like all it takes all types to make the world go round. It takes all types to make a lodge function, right? And <clears throat> yes, it takes good leaders, but not every man, not every good man is a leader. And I don't want I wouldn't want to be um excluding someone uh, and making it more of an elitist club. Um, simply because they have no desire to go through the chair and be a worshipful master. As much as I hate to say it, I think I agree with Stephen. <laughs> a couple of the guys who, who I've known who have been great Masons, or I would say some of the best Masons I've known, had no desire to go through the chairs and more power to them. But, so, yeah. Uh, sorry, I was going to go off on a tangent there. I'm going to stop myself. So the, I know, hard to believe. <laughs> the, uh, the, are there other points about this chapter that we, that no, we, chapter four really drew, draws me in there. Now I'm, I'm itching to go there. <laughs> right. Cause <laughs> as Freemasonry become too easy to obtain chapter four, right. You know, so um, I don't know, maybe we need to, uh, um uh, call that on uh, or bring that in for the next episode uh where's david when we need him throw some grenade All right um yeah so i get i i i feel like we have discussed this and we have not discussed this at the same time somehow the uh the well chart throw okay grenades. i'll throw a grenade because part oh, of this chapter okay. says is that there's the line uh, where did I see it? Uh, uh, men judge Freemasonry by what they see walking down the street wearing Masonic emblems. Well, can you, uh, hmm? How can you not? You, you can only judge it by what you see, know, and, and hear. Yeah, what's, your, what's your issue with the statement, I guess? 
not an issue with the statement. I'm just saying that once again, you know, are we qualifying our, you know, basically I, I get the impression that he's saying we, we should be qualifying our candidates more. And, uh, I'm, so. I, and I actually, I actually don't have a problem with that. I, I do agree that because part of, part of Freemasonry is we're, we're out to build a better world and you can't build a better world without stretching yourself. And if you're not willing to go into something and do something uncomfortable in order to to get better, then why are you joining? It's not a, sorry, I almost said it, not a social club. We're not just getting together to hang out and be with good people. We're there to do some work. And if you can't be bothered to do the work, why are you joining? So you're arguing that some people should not be admitted to Lodge because... If you don't want to go through the chairs? If you can never see yourself going through the chairs, I don't know why you're joining it. I don't know that if when I joined Masonry, I didn't even understand what going through the chairs was or going to whatever. I didn't understand that the... Maybe I didn't do my homework, but the wor what the Worshipful Master was. He was the club president, as far as I was concerned, when he showed up at my house. Right. But those, those who are looking for enlightenment aren't necessarily looking for... Uh, a whole bunch of work to do uh, as they go through these chairs and and become a worshipful master. You don't get in. You don't get enlightened by sitting on your ass and doing nothing. True, but it doesn't mean you have to go through the chairs to get enlightenment. How so are you, you saying? Are you saying that we should? I don't reject isn't the right word, but did the uh, filter out people who are not willing to do the work of self-improvement or are you saying like i mean he seemed to say like whatever we need the we need the town judge and the doctor and the lawyer and we don't need these yeah, uh, not, whatever lumberjacks they're not willing to be a leader they don't need to come right you know that way you say exactly. well you're already exactly. filtering people out by giving them the memorization question the uh, test right well, you I can go. You can be. I can. Jo I can join that. Freemasonry. I can sit on the sidelines and never have to memorize anything after my obligation. Yes, you could do that, but you would have had to have uh, memorized your obligation to uh, get into sitting on the sidelines. But what does that prove? If if I if I can memorize a bunch of lines like that just to get in to sit on the sidelines, am I being a good Freemason? Um, not just by doing that, there's a whole lot more involved in it, but that's a start. It's a starting point. Right. And really, it's part of the process we have in um, advancing our brothers through the degrees is they have to, you know, repeat their obligations and prove, prove themselves um to go to the next level so but free, yeah. we always say that freemasonry is a progressive science you can't stop progressing just after just because you've gotten your third degree well there's nothing that says you have to go any further no there isn't but what's the point i would argue there are paths to self-betterment that are not through the chair in the east and uh, one could study whatever symbolism or, or psychology or improve oneself in various ways that are not going through those chairs. And all of those don't require you to be a member in a lodge. You are right. They don't. I'm, okay. and I'm honestly, I'm just throwing things out here because someone said that we needed Dave to throw out grenades and <laughs> I'm sure make it my fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I guess you know they, you know, we there's varied opinions, right? <clears throat> and again, you know, it, it takes all different kinds to make the world go round, and you know, we couldn't have a, 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 a you know, the, the, there's debate on both sides for that, um, and I. I don't know. I think that it's going to be an age old debate for a long time, but I, I don't think that, um, <clears throat> I don't think that we should exclude somebody uh, and, and because they don't want to become the leader of the, the group. 
just my opinion. All right. Well, I feel like we've, I feel like I need to jump on the grenade and, and make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, does anybody have any, any last parting shots for chapter three? All right. Hearing none. Uh, I guess I want to thank you all for listening to the Working Tools podcast. As always, uh, please feel free to comment on our various social media, YouTube, whatever things. Uh, we love to hear from you, and and uh, we try to reply in a timely manner. And with that, on behalf of Stephen and, and Jared and the semi-present David and myself, we want to thank you all for listening, and have a good night. Goodbye. Thank you.